President, I move that this bill now be read a second time. In doing so, I acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. When in this chamber, we honour the lands of the Kaurna people, the traditional owners and custodians who have thrived and lived in balance on this land for thousands of generations. Where we are now, on Kaurna country, this whole state, the whole of this nation, always was and always will be Aboriginal land. I extend my respect to Kaurna people as well as to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the state. And, sir, I'm pleased that so many Aboriginal leaders and community members who have contributed on this bill have chosen to come to Parliament today. I'm grateful for your long-standing willingness to walk together with this and other governments and with the broader South Australian community. It's only when we work together that we can really make a difference. As my friend, Senator Pat Dodson, has said, reconciliation is a journey for all Australians. When we acknowledge our history and share this load, we help to unburden each other and the healing together begins. In the decades and centuries gone by, the laws of our state and that of the colony that preceded it have done so much to disadvantage, discriminate against and disempower Aboriginal people. Today, this government seeks to use the laws of our state to achieve exactly the reverse. I've worked in and around Aboriginal affairs for more than two decades now. I've had the privilege, both as a South Australian Minister for Aboriginal Affairs and in earlier roles, to be involved with a range of legislation, programs and initiatives created to support Aboriginal people and Aboriginal communities. In all my experiences, the one thing I'm absolutely certain of is that services, programs, legal mechanisms that are created for Aboriginal people only work properly when Aboriginal people are directly involved in their design. Far too often in our history post-colonisation, it's been the practice of governments at every level not to invite and quite often not to permit Aboriginal people to be included in or contribute to the decisions that directly affect their lives. This means decisions have been made for Aboriginal people and not with them. The legislation I introduced today seeks to change that. Whether driven by well-intentioned ignorance or deliberate cruelty, the practice of excluding Aboriginal people from the decisions that affect them has, in our history, at best stood in the way of progress. At worst, it has been used as a tool of oppression and brutality, enshrining intentionally harmful policies in law, destroying families, communities and culture. Governments across every state and territory of our nation have failed to appropriately include and consult Aboriginal people for far too long. I now turn to some of the detail of the bill itself. Part one of the bill sets out important preliminary matters. In response to feedback from engagement sessions, the definitions of Aboriginal person and country have been replaced with First Nations person and traditional owner. The definition of First Nations person adopts the tripartite test as set out by Justice Brennan in Mabo, First Queensland number two, and is commonly used by governments all around Australia. A reference traditional owner in relation to a particular place is now modelled on references in our legislation. What diminishes us is that Aboriginal people were denied a voice in shaping the decisions that affected their lives for so long. A First Nations voice helping to guide better outcomes for Aboriginal people and communities in this state will elevate every single South Australian. I've heard people put forward the objection that establishing a voice to Parliament will create further division between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people on the basis of race. That position is not reflective of the fact that such division already very much exists. To suggest otherwise is both insulting to Aboriginal Australians and utterly incorrect on the basis of observable fact. That division is deeply entrenched and the consequences arising from that division are why we see the education outcomes, the economic outcomes, the health outcomes and the life expectancy outcomes that we do for First Nations South Australians. That division is the very force that created the gap that we try and try to close. Some have warned that we will see ugly and hurtful expressions of racism as part of this journey. Of course we will. We already have. But if we avoided making significant reforms on the fear of drawing out the worst in a small minority, we'd never see progress. Just imagine, just imagine telling Rosa Parks or Charlie Perkins not to get on those buses or to challenge a status quo for fear of drawing out racism and hatred. Uh -uh. Campaigns like these do come at a cost, and it's one that's borne most heavily by those to whom bigoted and hateful people are already inclined to denigrate and vilify. 
but that cost is far outweighed by the transformative outcomes and reforms that things like this can achieve. And far from dividing us, this legislation is precisely aimed at helping Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal South Australians walk together. It will enable us to find ways together, not only to remedy the consequences arising from the division that has already been allowed to persist for too long, but to begin to mend that division itself. For more, for more than 200 years of history and from my own personal experience, I know that in order for us to be successful in mending that division, Aboriginal people must have the ability to make representations to this parliament and to this government to have a voice in their processes. And frankly, it's my view that Aboriginal South Australians have been exceptionally patient in waiting for that opportunity to be properly heard. It's been slow and often excruciating as a journey to arrive at the point we do today. Let us make them wait no longer for access to this crucial avenue of participation in our democracy that will elevate our whole community and help us realise a fairer and more just future for all. It was well more than 50 years ago at the 1967 referendum that Aboriginal people were counted. And through the First Nations voice proposed in this bill, we propose that we will be heard. I commend this important historic bill to members and seek leave to insert the second uh, the explanation clauses into Hansard without my reading them. Order.